Did you know that NASA has been desperately trying to remove the hurdles of interstellar travel? Well, that's true. Seamless space travel is soon to become a possibility. In today's video of The Door to the Universe, we will give you insight into the new need for nuclear rocket engines. That is one essential required to change the whole experience of space exploration. Let's first talk about the gaps. The gaps that are holding NASA back. Some of the countable issues that NASA is facing are transporters, artificial gravity, thermal engines, and universal translators. However, the core issue for an efficient interstellar journey is the immensely higher speed of the aircraft, satellites, or spaceships. The experts are putting their blood and sweat for decades to turn years and decades of interstellar travel into days or even hours. As for now, we can't even get to Earth's moon with a considerable payload in hours or even a week. Although we can get to Mars through an eight-month journey, Jupiter and Saturn still require a journey of multiple years. So instead of taking years to get on a planet with a very adjustable payload, NASA is planning to change the direction of work. A technology from many decades back has been reworked and brought to application by NASA shortly. This technology is known as the Experimental Propulsion Technology. This technology tends to take the aerospace industry to where no one could have ever gone before, as NASA is adopting nuclear industrial science. Let's talk about NASA's nuclear engine, how the development plan goes, and what franchises are part of the plan. The two big names of aerospace from the United States, NASA, which stands for the National Aeronautic and Space Administration, and DARPA, which stands for the Defense Advanced Research Project Agency, will be seen together on the mission. These agencies will be working on developing and launching the first ever spaceship that is powered by a nuclear thermal propulsion reactor engine. This partnership of the two operations of the United States, NASA and DARPA, is being called the Demonstration Rocket of the Agile Cislunar Operations, abbreviated to DRACO. As the goal was described by Bill Nelson, NASA Administrator, develop and demonstrate advanced nuclear thermal propulsion technology as soon as 2027. With the help of this new technology, astronauts could journey to and from deep space faster than ever, a major capability to prepare for crewed missions to Mars. Moreover, as quoted by the NASA's Deputy Administrator, Pam Melroy, Draco will be a critical part of evaluating the technologies that will take us deeper into the solar system. Our intent is to lead and develop a blueprint from human exploration and sustain that presence throughout the solar system. That is a very important goal, and we think these advanced technologies will be a critical part of it. Worth noticing is that Draco is supposed to be launched in the next five years, so the working franchises must be confident in their development to announce it already. The nuclear spaceship is supposed to be launched initially into the cislunar space, which is the space between the Earth and the Moon. However, if this demonstration sustains success, the ultimate goal is to send people to Mars and then to deeper space through the nuclear thermal engine spacecraft. Nuclear thermal engines are expected to provide three to five times greater speed and efficiency than the previous engines. Although this efficiency doesn't sound high enough to launch spaceships in deeper space, evolutions and amendments are expected from time to time, making the development meet the needs. As for now, nuclear thermal engines are expected to reduce the period of landing on Mars from eight months to just 45 days. As NASA is the main source of developing and launching the nuclear thermal engine spacecraft, they have the contractors on board with them to work. Even though the company is not announced yet, in July 2021, NASA's funds went to three proposals for nuclear thermal engine development. Let's have a look at all the fund's receivers. First is the BWX Technologies, partnered with Lockheed Martin. The second one is the General Atomics Electromagnetics, having a partnership with the Aerojet Rocketdyne. The last is Ultra-Safe Nuclear Technologies, being partnered with Blue Origin and General Electric. The legacy aerospace technologies and nuclear research, in collaboration with one of the three partnerships mentioned earlier, will be responsible for developing the propulsion system for the first ever nuclear engine spaceship. However, DARPA will take the control of leading the development of the spaceship. The spaceship is codenamed XNTRV. A phase one exploratory development was initiated by the collaboration of Aerojet Rocketdyne, Blue Origin, 
and Lockheed Martin on instructions of DARPA in 2021. You will be surprised to know that this plan of launching the first ever nuclear thermal engine-powered spacecraft began in the 1960s. Werner von Braun, a former scientist turned NASA engineer, created the blueprints for nuclear rockets. The idea was the same as to take humans to Mars, but by 1980 instead of the 21st century. Sadly, the funding of the execution of his perfect plan never came again. Talking about the process and working principles of this technology, the calculations and science sound simpler than the name itself. The liquid rocket engine is uncomplicated in design. It requires two tanks. A slightly bigger one contains the liquid oxygen, called the oxidizer, while the slightly smaller one is filled with rocket fuel. Both liquid oxygen and rocket fuel are pumped into a combustion chamber for the explosion. This explosion results in the exhaust gas which is pushed through the nozzle. This push results in acceleration and hence thrust is produced. Various types of fuels can be used in the rocket and the choice differs by the application. Talking about the most recent launch boosters utilize a greatly refined kerosene known as the RP-1. However, most upper stage engines are powered by liquid hydrogen fuel. The modern or latest rocket designs, such as the Blue Origin BE-4, are powered by liquid methane fuel. Gases like oxygen, methane, and hydrogen are liquefied by the process of supercooling. These gases are supercooled by immensely low cryogenic temperatures. This process helps to elevate the density of these gases, inducing an even more powerful reaction inside the combustion chamber. The nuclear thermal engines processed by the use of heat worked up by a nuclear reactor. Particularly speaking, this process involves nuclear fission. Nuclear fission is the phenomenon of splitting the atom from the radioactive element uranium. These atoms are stormed with free electrons. These electrons cause the split of the nucleus in uranium into two or more nuclei. The splitting results in an immense amount of energy. Not only energy, but this process results in more free electrons that cause even more atoms to split. That is why nuclear fission is also known as an ongoing chain reaction. This continuous chain reaction results in continuous new energy. This nuclear energy generated by the process of fission alternates with the chemical energy of bursting propellants in the design of the engine. The heat created by the Draco reactor is supposed to go as high as 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit, which is equal to 2,760 degrees Celsius. To make use of this generated nuclear energy, or heat, it is supposed to be converted into applicable thrust. To make this conversion possible, a liquid fuel source is needed. Specific to the situation, the developers are talking about liquid hydrogen as hydrogen is the lightest gas available. The pumping of this liquid hydrogen through the reactor core by a high-speed turbo bump results in the boiling of hydrogen. This boiling causes the expansion of hydrogen back into gas, which is pushed through the nozzle to create thrust. So, with all the preparations and collaborations prepared by the aerospace industry, we can believe this is to be a highly successful mission. However, time will unwrap the better truth. Let us know in the comments what you want to learn about next. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for continuous updates.